Hey, welcome back to another NetCast. I'm Rich Lopez, Quantrix Authority. Sincerely appreciate you joining me today for episode number 103, Build Fiscal Week Calendar in Quantrix Part 1. I absolutely love Quantrix, and this is why. Traditionally, I have built this calendar here for uh, the Boy Scouts to help us with our yearly planning. I've traditionally built it in Excel, and it's kind of hairy in the fact that it's got some kind of crazy formulas in it which you know you can understand min offset rows day max not not too cumbersome but a little bit tricky but there's lots of kind of formulas and there's a lot of manual work in a two-dimensional model that i just really don't like and so you know i kind of tried to build this in in excel and it's worked for me years in years past and it probably would work for me going forward but i thought heck i don't want to do anything in excel i want to be using quatrix because Quantrix is awesome and ought to be able to do this really simply. And you know what? It does. And I want to show you how to do that here. So what I did in Quantrix is I went ahead and I pulled in this date dimensions table. Okay. More or less as my calendar year, as my financial date, and my, as my, uh, the day of the week financially, uh, my financial week in the month, this can be anywhere from one to five. And then my financial month is a three letter code. And then my day in the month. Okay. So I have these columns. What I do is I go ahead and I create another matrix. And I'm going to say, I'm going to add a couple categories here. I'm going to call one year. I'm going to call another month. And I'm going to call another week. Okay. My year one is going to be 2016. And my month is going to be, start with January. And then the beauty with Quantrix, I hit that 12 times. And it gives me all the way to December. And then my week is going to be... Week one, two, three, four, and I set up the five. And I'm going to bring week down here. And I'm going to have these metrics here. What I want to do is I want to determine when the start date should be for these, for these dimensions here. So if I go start date, and I'm also going to want to have end date. Okay, and then I'm going to create something called the name. So really the start date is where my year and my month and my week line up to these items over here of year, month, and week. So when I want to link items to categories, it's a basic using as. So I'd say start date equals the day in the month using items. So year as year. I'll go to my next line and I will do month as month. And I'll go to my next line and I'll do fine week and month as week. If I go like that, I should see 3, 10, 17, and 24. For March, I would expect to see what I have here. Now, how am I gonna figure out the end date? Well, I know that the end date of every week in this calendar ends on Saturday. So what I wanna do is I wanna go out and I wanna say, well, go ahead and select from this list the day in the month and my key list. What I wanna look up is the financial day of the week, three letter code, and I want to look up Saturday. So I'll type that in double quotes. I also need to make sure that I'm associating year, month, and week along the, as items to the appropriate categories. When I do that here, bam, you can see that I get 27 and two here for the last week of March. If I were to go to look at my calendar here, that currently in, I would expect to see 27 and two. I'd expect to see 13 and 19, and that's what I'm seeing. So now what I do is I'll go ahead and I will create a name here. And I will say, if is blank start date, okay, then if that is true, then don't give me anything. Otherwise, give me the start date and a concatenation of that with a hyphen. And let me get that right. And the end date, like so, bam. And I'm gonna center that. So that kind of gives me a header of every one of these months. And then I want to add some detail to it. So I'm just gonna call this detail, okay? I'm going to hide these now. If I collapse them, actually I'm just gonna, I'm gonna create a view. I'm going to hide them. Collapse, and then I'm gonna make my name. I'm gonna format that to be gray. 
And you can see now, if I make this a little bit bigger, and I bring this to be big, I've created this kind of fiscal calendar of, of all my weeks by month for the year 2016. The beauty is if I want this for 2017, and if I have 2017 in my data set, I can go ahead and hit enter and it populates 2017 for me automatically. Whereas with the lesser program known as Excel, that would have taken me several different keystrokes, been much more cumbersome, but with Quantrix, it's really simple. Uh, in the next episode, I'll kind of show you how I format this so I can print it nice and pretty and uh, get it ready for our meetings and planning with the scouts. Anyway, if you have any questions about Quantrix, I do hope that you'll reach out to me at quantrixauthority at gmail.com. I absolutely love Quantrix. I'm passionate about it because it's awesome. It makes your life better, both in work and outside of work. So I hope that you will join me again for another episode of Quantrix Authority with Rich Lopez.